All right, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to another breakdown. I'm gonna do something a little different for this one. Do something a little different, all right? For this one, you guys are gonna read the passage on your own, and I'm not going to tell you where to highlight. I'm not gonna, you know, make this passage make sense. Okay, for this one, I'm gonna let you guys interpret the passage, but I will help you on the questions. All right, that's it. So read the passage, guys. Pause it if you need to. When you're done, resume the video. And then we're going to go over these questions. All right. So this is question 19, 20, 21, 22. Okay. So pause it whenever you need to pick your answers. See how many you got right. Okay. I already read this passage on my own. With which of the following processes is a double stranded DNA break not typically associated? Okay. It is going to be associated with recombination. You're literally breaking the DNA apart. Okay. Not apart, but you're literally crossing over. Okay, you're breaking a segment of DNA and putting out another chromosome. So recombination is involved in DNA strand break. Mitosis is not. Mitosis, you're separating the centro centromeres. That's it. You're not breaking any DNA. And then Robertsonian translocations, you are literally breaking a part of DNA and putting out another chromosome. You're making a fusion chromosome. So these are wrong. So the answer is B. 20. A researcher measures the frequency of Robertsonian translocations in a randomized sample and finds it to be significantly lower than what he expected based on his earlier calculations. Which of the following could account for the difference observed? Okay. A. Given the similar length of chromosome arms, many translocations are undetectable. This is false. Okay, this is false. All right. When you think about chromosomes, you it would be pretty obvious. All right. Like, look at... Look at this, okay? Let's say I did a Robertsonian translocation. This is one chromosome, and this is another chromosome, all right? And I translocated this portion onto this. This is what I get now. This is what I get. And I get, all right? This is the part that was added, and this is the part that was missing. It would be pretty obvious, all right? Chromosomal translocations generally resolve in the first year of postnatal life. This was never told us any time in the passage, and there's no evidence at all for this. This is wrong. And they wouldn't. How would they resolve? How? To your DNA. It's literally your DNA. Okay. Addition or deletion of genetic material and unbalanced translocation likely occurred in the unaccounted translocations. This could make sense 100%. In the unbalanced translocation, you there could be a possibility of termination of the pregnancy. Maybe those died. And since they died, the researcher can't, you know, count those because they're dead. All right, he can't take the, the he's not they're not involved in the sample. All right, so C is a good answer. The researcher's sample population likely possess younger parents than the overall population. Not necessarily, because even though they have younger parents, they might have carrier father, okay, or a carrier mom. I could ruin it. All right, so the answer here is C. That's the best answer. Which of the following techniques would be least likely to detect a Robertsonian translocation? Southern blot. You're looking at DNA on a gel. That's it. Or you're finding a gene. You're not looking at the whole chromosome. A would be least likely. All right, karyotype, 100% that would tell you. High resolution, it's even a better answer. Okay, B and C would definitely tell you if there was a Robertsonian translocation. Fluorescent in C2 hybridization of chromosomes. In C2 means that this experiment was performed at the original place, all right, of what we're looking at. So, Fluorescent in C2 hybridization of chromosomes means that those chromosomes, they were fluoresced and hybridized at the point at, at the place where the chromosomes were made. So this would tell us 100% where and if we have a Robertsonian translocation. Okay, we're literally looking at the chromosome structure with fluorescence. Okay, Southern Blah is the only one that's not looking at the chromosome structure, therefore 21 is A. A young couple trying to have a son recently viewed a special report on the news about reproductive health and became concerned about the possibility of birth defects. They made an appointment at the fertility clinic 
and upon completing several tests, the physician explained that their health was excellent, but they had a 1% risk of having a son with Down syndrome. Which of the following statements is most likely true? This is a probability of developing Down syndrome by chance. No, they told us that for a young woman, it's a young couple, they're looking at 0.1, and let's say the father was a carrier and they wanted a son, okay? This would not be it. It wouldn't be 1%. It would be way lower. That's the probability of developing Down syndrome. It's way lower, okay? By chance, it's way lower. The mother possesses a Robertsonian translocation. Maybe. The father possesses a Robertsonian translocation, maybe. The doctor detected a non-disjunction. Non-disjunction is not going to... And the mother's O sites. We don't have information for this. Plus, a non-disjunction, I don't think that would lead to Robertsonian translocation. And even a non-disjunction, 1%. Mm. And they don't tell us if this non-disjunction is in mitosis or meiosis. So, 22 is wrong. Mother or father? Okay, if they have a 1% risk, the father carrier is 2%. A young woman, because they're a young couple, is 0.1%. All right. If the father was a carrier, he can give it to his son and daughter. But since they're having a son, we will cut that in half. All right. Which will be a 1%. Him having a child with Down syndrome is 2%. But him having a son with Down syndrome is 1%. All right. So, answer C. All right, let's see if we got them all right. Let's see what we got. Well, it was 19 to 22. Here's 19. Here's 20. It's 21. 22. And here's explanation for 22. There you go, guys. That's how it is. This one I didn't like. This is not a good question. But the other ones were pretty, pretty solid. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to do six more breakdowns, and that might be it. I don't know. We'll see. Join MCAT University. See you guys in the next video.